Studying at the University of Urbino is a very special type of experience because the university plays such an incredibly important role in town life. Approximately 15,000 residents live together with another 15,000 students, making this small central Italian town a beehive of activity well beyond its natural proportions. The town itself became important during the Renaissance, living its own rebirth after the second duke, Federico II of Montefeltro, invested heavily in the building of Urbino's ducal palace. Baltasare Castiglione's The Book of the Courtier describes Urbino's Renaissance court as a standard setter for what was to characterize a modern European gentleman for centuries to come. During the Second World War, the town of Urbino was at the center for the Battle of the Gothic Line in the late summer of 1944, the unfolding of which shaped local and national politics for the entire post-war period. This little town has had a big history, and as a student here, you will live with and experience how that history has helped shape town life today. We'll talk about all that when you get here, but first, let's take a quick look at what it's like to live here. Weather in Urbino is variable. You can get all four seasons in one day. During the academic semesters, you'll have rain, warm days all the way through November, thick fog, worse than London in the 19th century. By the end of November, we get the first snowfall. So you want to come prepared. You want to bring hats, winter coats, lots of layers so that you can change quickly when need be. We're at 500 meters above sea level, kids. That's about 1,500 feet. I'm not going to lie to you. We get lots of humid weather off the Adriatic Sea, and then we get it again off the mountains. Anything can happen in the course of a day. Kind of makes it interesting, right? If you're an outdoorsy person, pack for lots of different types of weather. But even if you're in town, would you believe this segment was shot in one two-hour period on one day? And look, there you have it. One minute dark clouds, the next minute bright sun. Pack your shorts. So, let's head into Piazza, the town square, the heart of Urbino. See what people are doing. As Antonio and Francesco mentioned, socialization is everything to Italians. And Piazza is the center of socialization in Urbino. It's where everybody meets. You can get a lot of things done, a lot of business taken care of, a lot of friendships made, a lot of conversation, just by going into Piazza. Antonia and Francesco told me that Italians are active people. Much of that activity includes walking around town. There are book fairs, there are restaurants, there are lots and lots of hills. And one thing you want to be careful about when you're walking is footwear. Piazza's quite flat, but the rest of Urbino's on a hill, and these cobblestones are unforgiving to weak ankles and high heels. On your way into town from the dorms, you pass through the Mercatale Square. This is where all the buses stop. They can take you to Pesaro or just around town. Just off Piazza are all of the services. Really within about 500 feet, you'll find the post office, banks, bank machines, the police, many different types of shopping from food shopping to clothes shopping, all kinds of things. Further up from the main piazza, we find the Piazza del Duomo, right next to the Ducal Palace and the Cathedral of Urbino, where the Archbishop stays. Piazza del Rinascimento, right next to the Ducal Palace and the Duomo, or the Cathedral, begins the university section of town. Although faculties are strewn all across the city, the Faculty of Languages, Pharmacy, and the University Central Buildings are right on Piazza del Rinascimento. Uh, 
Okay, we're at the end of day two of filming, and again, I'm getting hungry. I've stopped into a shop just to whet my appetite. But in my hunger, I thought I'd show you around one of my favorite restaurants, Il Portico. There are many good restaurants in Urbino, but I like coming here for the family atmosphere. Maybe a taste of ham. Or, what's this in the corner? Flour? A pizza oven? Hmm, I'm really getting hungry. But first, let's step into the kitchen. These people are not from Urbino. They're actually from down south, from Naples, and proud of it. So their kitchen is a Neapolitan kitchen, and their dishes are Neapolitan. I can't get enough of them. Today it looks like zucchini and melanzane, or eggplant, or aubergine, depending on which part of the Anglophone world you're from. Anna is a traditional Neapolitan cook. She's done many things in life, and cooking is one of the better ones. Sono particolari? E certo. Queste sono E qual è la particolarità? Rise. Ah sì? E certo. I could learn to cook like this. Maybe I'd stop making videos and teaching. I just get fat and eat all the time. But again Antonia reminds us that you can eat and eat and eat, which I love. And Urbino so hilly, it's a natural gym. Great. Bring it on. Buon Mmm, eggplant delicious. It's important to take time out to say kudos to the cook. These are the people who give us the energy to go about the things we need to do. But let's go upstairs and take a look at the restaurant. Now again, this is only one restaurant in Urbino. I just like the feel of the place. It's always good for conversation, chit chat, great food, and for me, a place to unwind. Italy is, of course, famous for its food, and we can't forget the cooks. The food is indicative of the culture. Chefs here don't just pop things out of cans and microwaves. There's a lot of tradition. That means that the new and the modern must fit into the context of what already exists. In food and in culture, Italy has a lot to teach us. Even at the table, I always learn something new. Bello, vero, dai. Coming to Urbino is a life-changing experience, a challenge but you'll meet fantastic people along the way. The housing's pretty good, but the food is outstanding. Studying is a challenge, but the university provides a lot of learning opportunities, even in itself. It's got Renaissance palaces and systems, but also modern ones. Town is a microcosm of central Italy. People live very close together and see each other all the time. It means the social network that you need to survive is there. You can have a fantastic time in this town if you make it yours. Exactly how you make it yours will work out when you get here. 